what's up YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back with a video review. And for this review, we're going to be taking a look at Saints Row the Third for the Nintendo Switch. Game is also available. Oh, actually, it's the full package, so I forgot to point it out. Game is also available on the PS3, the Xbox 360, Linux, and of course PC via Steam. But for this review, we're going to be taking a look at the Nintendo Switch version. And of course, I, I'm going to give you my thoughts on the movie Godzilla, King of the Monsters that I just saw in theaters. And if you're interested in um, any gameplay footage, I'll have a link in the description of this video. Um, as far as the Saints Row series goes, the series has always been sort of living under the shadows of Grand Theft Auto, which is often by many of you as sort of the king of open world games. Um, and But I'm not saying the Saints Row series is bad or anything like that. For me, I didn't really get into the Saints Row series until Saints Row the Third came out, when that originally came out on the PS3 um, back in, I believe, 2001. And it was a completely, the game was a little bit different, somewhat different than from what the Saints Row, from what, I mean, sorry, what Grand Theft Auto was. Where Grand Theft Auto started to take more of a serious tone, or although... Um, there are some funny moments in the game as well, but mostly on the serious side though. Saints Row, starting with Saints Row 3, has always been sort of taking like a break in the fourth wall, like over the top kind of humor and so forth. And again, some people like it, some people don't, but many consider like Saints Row the third to be like their favorite entry into the Saints Row series. And we've seen the sequel Saints Row to 4 and the spin-off Agents of Mayhem. And while Saints Row 4, not everyone is a fan of it though. I personally didn't hate the game. Same with Agents of Mayhem. Yes, not 100% perfect. I felt the humor on that one. They kind of toned it down a little bit. It's still an M-rated game, don't get me wrong, but nowhere near the level as what, um, what the Saints Row series is. But nevertheless, I, I, I certainly enjoyed the game though. So it was kind of interesting to hear um, last year when it was announced that THQ Nordic or shall we say, Deep Silver, which is now owned by THQ Nordic, was bringing Saints Row the Third over to the Nintendo Switch. And unfortunately, the game kind of got off to a bit of a rocky start. When the game originally came out, the day one patch that was supposed to come with it was delayed for, like, um, a week, which made the game virtually, for some, unplayable to several crashes and glitches in the game, though. So now that the day one patch has come out and now have invested um, a couple weeks into the game, I will say the game is still enjoyable and it still remains my favorite um, Saints Row game, but it's, but it's far from a perfect port on the um, Nintendo Switch. So why don't we get started with our pros and cons and we'll start off first with the pro. And the first one has to be the story. Uh, one of the things I will give credit to the Saints Row series is that it's known for putting out these over-the-top kind of stories, and Saints Row 3 is no exception. Um, basically, the way I could sum up is that the humor is kind of similar to how South Park is. So, if you like South Park humor or anything like that, you'll probably like the humor in Saints Row. So, I mean, there are some serious moments, as you see, like, Shawnee, you know, reacting to... Johnny Gack's death and so forth, but for the most part, it's breaking the fourth wall, a whole bunch of dirty jokes in the game and all, and honestly, that doesn't bother me in any way. So as far as story goes, I like that it's over the top, it doesn't take itself too serious. Um, some people may have issues with it, but I personally didn't. The next thing I do want to talk about is the gameplay, and I will say the gameplay is certainly fun. I mean, it's your base, it's your basic sandbox game. You have basically you hijack cars, you drive all over the place, though, and there are, and the gameplay is you know a third-person shooter and so forth. And for the most part, it plays well, though. The gameplay is. Um, fun, even regardless if you're playing it in handheld or in console mode on the Nintendo Switch. And the fact that the game does support two-player co-op, although I haven't tried it out yet. And I do believe that there is an online um, co-op as well, although I'm not 100% sure on that one. But as far as gameplay goes, it's fine. And the next thing I do want to talk about is the fact that this is the complete edition. Meaning that you are going to get all the DLCs, that includes all the vehicles in the game, to even the DLCs that are in the game, such as 
Genki Ball, Gangster in Space, and the trouble with clones and so forth. So you're getting the full package in one cartridge or anything like that. There's no, um, unlike say Assassin's Creed 3 Remaster, where in that game, although you get all the DLCs, uh, for you you have to sort of download them though so for example the tyrants of george washington um you'll have to download that from the nintendo eShop to play it although the one bright spot about that is that it is free to download so you don't have to worry about paying or anything like that though but if, as far as saints row um saints row the third goes though every, all the dlcs are in the game cartridge so you don't have to worry about doing any extra downloads or anything like that so Good that the developers did that, and great that all the DLCs are in it. It's not the vanilla version of Saints Row the Third. And last but not least is some of the side missions, and some of them are pretty fun. No, um, my personal favorites are basically the Professor Genki um, one. The that one is fun though. The Tank Mayhem's are always a riot. I always love that one. And of course, the insurance fraud. Uh, those the insurance fraud is also fun. Although I will admit, though, to some degree, the insurance fraud in Saints Row to Four I think is um, better because of the fact of the superpowers, which adds a little bit more to it. So, but nevertheless, insurance fraud, it, t Tank Mayhem, and Professor Genki are definitely fun side missions. So, but for the most part, most of the side missions are fun in Saints Row the Third. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we're going to get to part two, the cons, and of course, my thought on Godzilla, King of the Monsters. So we'll take a quick break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of our video review of saints row the third the full package for the nintendo switch so now that i gave you my um pros why don't we get started with the cons and we'll start off with the first con um the first one has to do with some of the side missions now as i said in the pros though i did some of the side missions in the game are fun as i pointed out i enjoyed the professor genki tank mission and of course the insurance fraud however as fun as some of the side missions are some of them I'm not really, a, I'm not, don't really enjoy as much. There are some that are okay, like the escort, the trafficking, and I think the one called the snitch. I'm not 100% sure if I'm saying, apologize if I'm saying it incorrectly and all that stuff. But the ones that I find the most annoying is the helicopter ones. And mostly because it's kind of very difficult to kind of move the helicopter around and all that stuff it's playable and everything and once after a while you do get the idea but i just find that one to be the one i don't like the most mostly because of trying to control the helicopter trying to aim and hit you know the cars trying to protect your um your your you know your homies from the uh, you know, the other enemies attacking them as well so that one not really a big fan of the next thing I do want to talk about is the visuals in the game. And while I will say the visuals aren't hugely terrible, um, they're not exactly great either. I mean, they're all right and all that stuff. But, you know, Saints Row, the, when Saints Row the Third came out back in 2011, it wasn't really the most graphically demanding ga game or anything like that. It just got the job done, but it wasn't anything stylish or anything like that. I mean, again, the graphics are not ter terrible, but nothing nothing special to write home about, though. So for me, the visuals are so-so and all. And while I like the fact that the game, although I will say I do like the fact that the game does run at 1080p when in docked on the Nintendo Switch. And last but not least um, is the frame rate. Now, I do want to point out that the patch that did came out um, af after the game was launched, uh, basically a week later, though, did improve the game a little bit based on my time with it. I saw in one section though um, the frame rate was way better than it was when the game originally um, launched. So to me the patch did help and made the game in my opinion better than it was during launch. That said though that doesn't mean the frame rate is 
100% perfect at, in the game. And there are occasions where I do see the frame rate kind of take a take a hit. Um, sometimes if the screen could be a little bit chaotic or anything like that, though, there are occasions where um, the frame rate will take a bit of a dip and all that stuff. So there are occasions that the frame rate will, will happen. Also, there are occasions there are sometimes a little bit of glitches here and there. And while none of the glitches I ran into basically made the game crash or kick me out of the game or anything like that, some of them are kind of pretty obvious. Like, you might see, like, a NPC walk into, like, um, maybe, like, a wall or something like that or get stuck there. There will be occasions where, um, like, for example, like, like, maybe a car will get stuck somewhere and so forth or something like that. Again, nothing game-breaking, and like I said, nothing. I didn't see anything that kicked me out of the game or crashed the game or anything like that, but they are kind of noticeable a bit. Overall, I still enjoy Saints Row the Third on the Nintendo Switch. Saints Row the Third still remains one of my favorite Saints Row games out there, and the game is still enjoyable and fun, though. Um, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect, though. Not all the side missions are great, some might appeal to some people, some may not. The visuals isn't something great to write home about, anything like that, and the frame rate isn't 100% perfect, but the game is certainly playable. I do think the patch certainly helped, certainly made things a little bit better though, and the game is still fun. The gameplay is fun, the story's over the top, and the fact that you're getting all the DLCs definitely makes this above the vanilla version. So overall, my take on it though is that I like Saints Row the Third. I think it's a fun game though. So it's not a perfect port and it probably won't appeal to everybody though. But like Shakedown Hawaii though, it's the closest thing we got to a Grand Theft Auto game on the Nintendo Switch at the moment until <clears throat> Rockstar decides to bring over a Grand Theft Auto game. My hope is that they could bring over Grand Theft Auto 5 and maybe a remake of Grand Theft Auto 4 though. But Either way, overall, my take is I enjoy the game. I still enjoy Saints Row the Third. I'm glad that we could bring this game on the go on the Nintendo Switch. And I do hope, though, that they could be able to port over, say, Saints Row the Four, Saints Row Four, and Agents of Mayhem. I would like to see that come to the Nintendo Switch. And if a Saints Row Five does happen, if that ever does happen, I would love to see that come to the Nintendo. <coughs> Excuse me comes in the Nintendo Switch as well. <clears throat> okay, uh, before I end this video, I do want to give my thoughts on Godzilla King of the Monster. Now, I just saw this in theaters. I was lucky to see it in IMAX at my local theater, and I will say I enjoyed it, though. I mean, Basically, it's a Godzilla flick, though. It basically, the main attraction of the movie is Godzilla and fighting all the other monsters in it, though. It is a sequel to the 2014 Godzilla movie, and to some degree, a sequel to Kong Skull Island, in which they do mention um, Kong, and they do mention Skull Island in the movie as well. And basically, you learn about the three-headed monster. Again, I apologize if I'm not saying the name, if I don't know the creature's name and all, and its origins and all that stuff. And the best part about the movie, of course, obviously, is the monster fights. And those are the, those are the big moments in Godzilla King of the Monster, and they are freaking Awesome. They are probably the most enjoyable moments in the movie, though. I mean, the acting from the the acting from the human actors and all that stuff isn't bad or anything like that. There is a story, though, but it comes off as your basic, you know, disaster flick and so forth, which isn't necessarily a bad thing at all or anything like that. But the main selling point is obviously seeing Godzilla, and that is that's a big thing. You're not going to be disappointed with it. I will say, if you are going to see the movie, stay until after the credits end, because there is an end credits scene, and it looks like it sets the stage up for the sequel to Godzilla, um, King and the Monster. And it'll be very interesting to see, depending on how well this movie does at the box office, um, it'll be very interesting to see a third Godzilla movie from them. And I would like to see this one, and I will say to some degree... Um, I like this one a little bit more than the 2014 Godzilla movie. Not that I hate that movie, but the story I thought was 
Eh, this one, though, I thought was an improvement, though. And I thought the acting was also better than it was in the first um, Godzilla movie, though. So, overall, my take, if you're a fan of Godzilla, or if you like disaster flicks, I would say give Godzilla King of the Monster a look. <clears throat> Okay, um, this concludes this video review of Saints Row the Third, the full package for the Nintendo Switch, and my thoughts on the Godzilla King of the Monster movie. And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about Saints Row the Third for the Nintendo Switch? Is it worth picking up for the Nintendo Switch? Have you had issues with the game? Have you had not any issues with it at all? Do you, do you enjoy the game? Do you think it's fun on the Nintendo Switch? Or do you think the other versions are better? Um, what are your thoughts about Godzilla King of the Monster? Was it what it lived up to how what you wanted to see? Um, did you enjoy the movie? Did you not enjoy the movie at all? Do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Um, as always, sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And I hope you hit that like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to. And feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You could do it through PayPal me or or Patreon. Links will be in the description of this video. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that will be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good evening then. Bye!